Welcome to uh, my latest video. Unf unfortunately, this is one that I don't want to do. I'm standing in uh, a guest bedroom I have in my home. And um, I have a plumbing leak. And it's under the slab. Quick look at a wall I cut open here. Cut it open here. This wall on the opposite side is my garage and these two pipes come from uh, my hot water heater. One obviously is hot water and the other one is the cold water feed. And I cut another hole in the wall down here hoping that there might be some fittings where I could put a shutoff valve in but there aren't. And so the hot water pipe which is this guy here you can see they got a red sleeve on it and I'll uh, talk about that in a minute uh, this pipe here is the uh, hot water heater overflow you know the pressure valve overflow and it goes out out the side of the uh, house uh, this pipe here of course is the cold water feed it's blue blue is cold red is hot and uh, you can see some of the damage it did, the leak did to the baseboard here, to the uh, tack strip for the uh, carpeting. It ruined the carpeting and uh, I'll have to remove that. You know, there's a musty odor in this bedroom now from the uh, water. and. Um, the leak is under the slab and the way it migrated into the bedroom ordinarily you know if you had a leak under under the slab you wouldn't see it uh, percolate up uh, into the room but uh, this crack in the foundation right here you can see it where this side of the house settled uh, you can see the sand right here and this is where the water came up through the foundation and percolated up through the foundation um, through the slab from the leak which I got marked off here and I'll tell you how I found out in a minute but uh, that's how the water got in the room here and most of it ended up in that corner over there and uh, how I found this particular spot here is with a digital temperature meter, an infrared temp temperature meter. I read the uh, temperature because it is a hot water leak. Um, the, uh, the way I originally came about this is that uh, a person from uh, the local water company stopped by the house last week and said, hey, you got a leak, and he showed me uh, my water usage. Uh, from the last five months and then all of a sudden I've got almost twice the consumption so he knew there was a leak here and uh, so I started troubleshooting and I shut off the valve to the house outside the main shut off and uh, the meter went to zero and I turned it back on with nothing on in the house using no water in the house I had consumption of about uh, I think it was 0.17 gallons per minute, which works out to be about 10 gallons per hour leaking in a house someplace. Uh, but beyond that, I remember about a year ago, maybe it was a year and a half ago, I remember this water damage, some of it. It's, it's worse now than it was before, but I remember this uh, water damage um, was visible to me and uh, first thing I did was uh, because I got a window here was uh, I blamed the wife for leaving the window open uh, she's my go-to source for you know blame on anything like this so I <laughs> I uh, blamed her for leaving the window open and flooding the uh, bedroom here but um, she wasn't the source and this actually, this percolating up through the foundation like that only has happened twice. 
the water leak is under the foundation. Most of the water is dissipated by the sand under the foundation, but for whatever reason, every once in a while, like it did a couple of years ago, it percolated up to the foundation. And uh, here's another little symptom that I didn't understand at the time, but now all of a sudden all the pieces come together. Um, we have a freezer in here. And uh, <laughs> every time I would open this door to this room, it would be hot in here. And uh, I'd always dismiss it and say, well, that's the freezer right there, you know. But it wasn't the freezer. It was the hot water heating the slab in this room. So anyway, that's how I came about all this. Um, through uh, some troubleshooting, you know, the uh, water company guy came by and said, hey, you got a leak, look at your con consumption. I'm gonna have about a $300 water bill this month. Um, so thank God he did come by. Um, so um, this time it percolated up through the foundation because as a result of my troubleshooting this problem, I shut off the house and um, actually I didn't shut off the house, I'm sorry. I shut the water off at the meter outside. Um, I left the house on and then I opened up all the faucets in the house and um, I did that because it had a bad gate valve uh, on the water supply to the house so I couldn't shut it completely off I couldn't do any troubleshooting because the valve would never shut off and so when I shut the water off at the street uh, and and had opened up all the faucets and, and that kind of thing in the house so that I could solder a new valve in outside. When I turned the water back on, you know, the hydraulic, how would you say, the hydraulic pressure behind turning the water back on outside at the street and then turning the water on at the, at the side of the house with the new valve forced a lot of water through uh, the leak in the under the slab and it made it percolate up through the up through this crack again. So for the second time, it flooded this room and this time far worse than the first time that I I saw it. First time I saw it, it was just this little corner here and I saw some stains. Not as bad as it is now, but I saw some stains. Uh, and like I said, this has been going on for 18 months. I had no idea. You know, you get used to paying a certain amount on your water bill and, uh, you know, you don't think you have a leak because, you know, uh, the bill comes in and it's around the same every month. But this has been leaking probably almost two years now. And I didn't have a clue. Uh, so, anyway, this is where we are now. And I'm going to stop this for a minute and uh, I'm going to show you you already know where the water lines are. You already know there's a water heater on the other side of that uh, wall. And um, I'm going to shut this down for a minute and uh, I'll get back to you. Okay, so you're in my garage right now and here's the water heater right here in the corner and on the opposite side of this wall in my garage is that bedroom. And that's about all there is to see here. <laughs> and as though I don't have enough problems, uh, by the way, this valve was also defective in this house. Unbelievable. When I shut the hot water, this is the cold water feed to the hot water tank. But when I shut that valve off, I would still get hot water through this tank. So when I thought I was shutting the hot water off, I was still actually leaking water. <coughs> Excuse me. So. A double whammy. Not only did I have a bad gate valve outside that wouldn't shut the water completely off, then I have this attached to the uh, water heater over there, which is bad. So, back to All right, back in my garage again. Uh, I want to explain something. I mentioned having a sleeve. Remember that red sleeve around the pipe? 
that uh, went through the foundation and it goes under the slab. Now, code here says that you have to sleeve a pipe that goes through concrete. And so that pipe, uh, before they poured the con concrete for the slab, they sleeved it with that red sleeve, as you can see, and then it was a blue one for the blue pipe. And they make all the connections under the slab, or T's and elbows, whatever, you know, uh, to make all the branch circuits in the house. Um, that sleeve, um, if it is contiguous, what I mean by contiguous is that uh, that sleeve, if they use that sleeving on the entire pipe for the entire run, uh, that's a problem because here's what happens with the sleeve. And, and I'm just trying to illustrate a point here. Let me see if I can prop this up somewhere. I got a couple of pieces of PVC. We'll call this the red sleeve. It's not, but you know, it's a, a sleeve and inside the sleeve is a pipe. Okay, now if this pipe develops a leak let's say here, okay, which is about 10 inches from uh, the visible part of the pipe. Let's say this is in the wall, okay, this part attaches to the water heater. It, 12 inches away, if it devo develops a leak here, because of the sleeve, the water is going to show up someplace where there's a hole in the sleeving. Okay, so, you know, it's a rat hole that you go down now because years ago when I used to just bury the pipe in the sand under the slab, when there was a leak, you could be pretty sure that the leak is where it's supposed to be or where you detect it, okay? Let's put it that way. Uh, now, because of this outer sleeving on it, um, you can detect a high temperature in a slab like I did and everything, but the leak may not be there. Okay, that's the problem with this sleeving stuff. So I've got my fingers crossed that the pipe is not sleeved, except for the portion that goes down through the concrete, and that the rest of the run is just a plain pipe, because that should be below the concrete. Uh, if you know how they pour slab, uh, the plumber comes in, he puts all this plumbing pipe in and everything else, and, and where the pipe goes through the concrete, by code he's supposed to sleeve it to protect it from the concrete, um, uh, the elements in the concrete, the uh, chemistry of the concrete, and it also helps with, uh, you know, if the slab moves any, it's not going to break the pipe. But um, when he puts his plumbing in, they come back later and they fill um, over the top of the pipe. And they probably fill it with different materials in different parts of the country. Here they do it with sand. And so hopefully the pipe was buried in sand and it's not sleeved. Because if it's sleeved, then the hole I'm cutting in my concrete floor right now may not resolve my problem. Let me get back in. Uh, in okay, so on the premise that that red sleeve you see on the pipe there does not continue in the floor all the way. By the way, on the other side of this wall is a bathroom and a goes to a tub and on the far far side of the house there's another bathroom and another tub so I know this is pretty much a straight line right here right right where I've got this drawn out and this area you know, I don't know if you can see an X I put an X in there but you probably can't see with chalk you can't see the X but right in the middle here right here there's an X that was the area where I measured the highest temperature was about 106 degrees Fahrenheit. So, as I said before, 
I'm hoping that the pipe is not sleeved because if it's sleeved that will end up being only the area where the pipe is expelling the water or the sleeve is expelling the water because there might be a hole in the sleeve okay and so the pipe could be leaking over there it could be leaking over there uh, in the bathroom but the outer sleeve on it transfers the water to wherever there's a hole and it can escape and I'm hoping that that's not the case here I'm hoping that this hole I'm cutting in the concrete is going to expose an unsleeved pipe and the actual leak okay having said that not to make this uh, video too goddamn long um, I'm, I'm going to drill a series of holes around that orange marking to um, break up the concrete. This slab, by the way, is six inches thick. I'm using a rotary hammer drill. I don't know what size bit that is, but uh, it's from Harbor Freight, and so is the hammer drill. And the um, purest online, okay, I, let me say this. There are two ways to do this, to do this job. You see there's a window right here. If you're spry and you're young and uh, it's not 95 degrees outside, you can actually go outside next to the foundation and you can tunnel under and get at this plumbing, okay? Uh, you can, you know, dig, dig under the uh, footing and dig under the foundation if you're a crazy man, and I think crazy people do that, not me. But uh, that's the other way to do this without having to jackhammer your slab or cut a hole in a slab. I'm not going to do that. It's 95 degrees out there. It's humid, and I'm not going to die in a hole under, under the <laughs> side of my house. So it's easier for me to uh, just um, drill this out, break it up, get at the pipe, and see what I'm dealing with and if it so happens that the leak is not here what I can do to localize the leak at least find the direction where it is is I can cut the sleeving off cut a section out of the sleeving turn the water back on and see which part of the sleeving leaks if it's leaking over here under here in this direction I'll see water coming out of you know uh, uh, that part of the sleeving. If the leak is over here in the bathroom, uh, coming uh, in this direction, water will leak out of that sleeving in this direction. If there's no sleeving, God has blessed me, and uh, I'm going to get through this job uh, with just removing this concrete and fixing the pipe and uh, filling a hole in, and I'm off and running. Uh, so wish me luck. Oh, uh, one more thing I should say. Uh, I did mention, you know, that that's a hammer drill and that's a, a drill bit. And uh, <laughs> I don't know what size drill bit it is. But uh, I don't think you want to watch a video where I'm drilling a whole bunch of holes. But I am, you can see, drilling a series of holes. And right now, th there are holes in here, but... When you drill one hole, it fills up, the dust fills up the hole next to it. But um, I'm filling up the hole, uh, I'm drilling the holes. I'll drill the para uh, perimeter. I'll be very careful when I drill in this direction because I don't want to damage the pipe below. I already know the depth and I set my depth on the uh, hammer drill here, with the depth gauge. I set, set it to uh, six inches. And that's uh, pretty much what the uh, depth of the concrete is. And um, I'm just going to go along and finish this up. And I'll get back to you when I've got it pretty much uh, finished up and I'm ready to bust it up. Okay, just to uh, demonstrate uh, how easy it is to drill these holes when you have the proper tool. 
I'm going to drill one hole for you. This is a El Cheapo Harper Freight um, hammer drill. And again, I don't remember what size bit that is, but that's a Harbor Freight bit also. It's an SDS bit for a one inch uh, drill. And it helps to have the drill bit going in the right direction. That's it. Just got him, uh, probably another uh, uh, 25, 30 holes to drill. Maybe more, maybe about 50 uh, to get that whole slab. Remember, this is six inch concrete, so get that busted up with the sledgehammer. Uh, so you're not going to see me drilling every single hole, so I don't want to make this video all, all that long. Well, after uh, drilling one side here, I got tired and I decided maybe it's time to quit and go to sleep. And uh, as you can see, there's some water bubbling up through the holes that I cut into the uh, concrete so I have to stay up another half an hour or so make sure that this doesn't get any worse uh, you can see some water right there bubbling up coming up out of the holes there so I turn the water back on uh, because I want to take a shower tomorrow but uh, I may have to shut it shut it off overnight and turn it back on in the morning. Uh, we'll see how bad this gets. If it gets uh, any worse in the next 15 minutes, I'll shut it off. Oh boy! Well, this video might be a little out of uh, place. I suddenly came to the realization that I. Uh, showed you I dug a hole in the floor here, but I didn't show you how I found out where the leak was. So what I did was I looked over at my wall and uh, um, here's the hot water pipe and uh, I can see or I could see that it went straight in line here where I took a guess. Um, figuring that it would go straight in line because there's a bathroom behind me and what I did was with an infrared uh, temperature thermometer uh, I measured the slab temperature now the leak's fixed now so you won't see anything but where I cut this hole right in the center there was 106 degrees Fahrenheit and moving to the right the temperature would uh, drop and moving to the left the temperature would drop and so on <coughs> and so I was uh, able to localize the area to this and I marked an X here and and I cut out uh, or marked it with that orange paint so that I knew where to uh, <coughs> drill this thing out so this video might be a little out of order but uh, I just you know I was uh, previewing what I had already videoed and I just realized that I, I hadn't even shown this. So. Well, inexplicably, uh, I made a video and uh, the video disappeared on my computer. It was there, I put it in the editor and um, 
for some reason it removed it. So and that video showed uh, the discovery uh, of this elbow. They had an elbow in there and the elbow is cracked right here in the uh, uh, inside radius probably due to the crack in the slab when the slab settled years ago. This thing has probably been uh, leaking literally for years. Um, I didn't realize it and I didn't know it and uh, you know, when the water bill came I just paid the water bill. But this thing was leaking at a rate of um, 10 gallons per hour by my calculation which was about uh, close to 3,000 gallons a month uh, was going down the drain there, down, down into the sand. So I'm glad I got it done, but man, this was some work and it, it did some damage, that's for sure. If you look at the baseboard and the tack, tack strip for the uh, carpeting and all the carpeting's gotta be thrown away. It's all, it's all um, moldy and stained now. Whatever was on top of the carpet that was metal that I had on, on the carpet, I had some stuff under the bed. Uh, it stained the carpet, put rust stains on it. So this is a tough job, that's for sure. And uh, what this guy did, the plumber, uh, I, I'm totally confused because this line right here that we're looking at should continue on into the uh, into uh, that wall or beyond that wall because just beyond that wall is a bathtub. So why in the world this um, hot water pipe? which by the way feeds the whole house. Why it uh, you know, suddenly makes a right hand turn, I don't have a clue. I, don't, I still don't know where it goes and hopefully I'll never find out. Um, so that's the end of this uh, little video here.